Talk at Radio. Kevin O'Sullivan coming up very shortly. Our final guest of the day is Dr. Alan Mendoza, Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society. As uh, uh, we read that many, many police have arrested more than 1,700 anti-war protesters in Russia uh, as anger erupts over the invasion. There were protesters uh, in 54 cities in Russia, including uh, St. Petersburg, where Vladimir Putin actually hails from, uh, and also, of course, in Moscow itself. Alan, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Um, I'm not sure what this means. I mean, certainly you'd have to be a pretty brave individual to demonstrate against Vladimir Putin anywhere in Russia. Um, but it's quite an extraordinary development, isn't it? Um, it? It's less extraordinary than people think. There has been, of course, a long history of dissent in, uh, in Russia, even under Putin. When Crimea was invaded, for example, there were tens of thousands of protesters on the streets for a long time mm. in various cities. So it's not unprecedented. What is unprecedented is the brutal crackdown on the protesters. Yeah. Um, it seems that Putin, in line with his aggression elsewhere, is proving to be far more aggressive with domestic dissent uh, today than he was, you know, seven, eight years ago when he took Crimea. Yes. And as far as the kind of movement of, uh, of people in Russia who are anti-Putin, if you like, and do they have a figure? Because there was a time when there were various different figures that they could sort of rally around. There doesn't seem to be one particular individual, does it? Well, unfortunately, Putin has either killed or jailed, mm. um, you know, those who have opposed him in various ways. So, you know, Boris Nemtsov murdered, um, Alexei Navalny in prison, others have been forced into exile. Yeah. You know, the reality is that he's been very good at maintaining his police state rule, and that does make it difficult for the opposition to to mobilise and manage uh, yes. any, any kind of dissent. So as far as this crackdown is concerned, I mean, the people who are arrested, 1,700 of them, um, what will more than likely happen to them? Uh, well, it depends on what Putin decides to happen. them. He's not a nation with a rule of law anymore. It's a rule by diktat. Mm. So if Putin decides this is treason, they will face treason charges. They can face long periods in jail. Um, he might let some of them off with a rap on the knuckles. I think it's more a case of get them off the streets. Let's you know deal with this invasion and then we will decide what to do with our internal protesters afterwards. Yes. I mean, just on Ukraine itself, we're hearing that, uh, that Russian special forces are indeed um, in Kiev as we speak. But Ben Wallace, the Secretary of State for Defence, says he doesn't think that the Russians are going to get what they want as easily as they want. Is that your view? Well, it's very clear, of course, in a war zone, what you know, what, what the actual state of affairs is. What we do know is the Ukrainian army is, of course, outgunned by the Russians. The Russians have gone on multiple fronts, which is very difficult to defend against. Ukraine's territory is not particularly helpful to defenders. Um, it, it is likely that, of course, there will be um, sab you know, sabotage squads and others coming into big cities to try and cause dissent. The Russians will face problems, though, trying to take urban areas, just like anyone, any army in the modern day does, because you get guerrilla warfare in a much more confined space. So mm. I think um, a lot will depend on how quickly Russia can advance to encircle Kiev. If the Ukrainian forces can somehow fend them off, that would be a tremendous uh, help to Ukraine. And of course, the big question, Mike, are we actually going to do anything about it? Or are we just going to let him stroll in and take the whole country? Well, from what I can gather this morning, talking to various members of parliament and others, um, I don't think we are. Uh, NATO seems to be a spent force. The Biden administration doesn't seem to know uh, which end is up. And uh, Boris Johnson can't get his way with the European leaders. So uh, we are where we are, I think. Right now, I think your assessment is as good as we're going to get. Um, but, that is, but that is shameful. It really is. It's embarrassing, in fact, is what I would say. Dr. Anna Mendoza, thank you very much indeed. I find it embarrassing. I find it woeful that we've got an organisation called NATO that doesn't seem to do anything.